Hello, I'm Elaine Stevens, and I want to welcome you to Artbeat. Well, you are watching Artbeat. Welcome to Artbeat once again, where art is the heartbeat of South Mississippi. And the artist whose sketch pad I'm holding happens to be the heartbeat of Ocean Springs. He's a man you'll see riding on a bicycle, sketching unusual characters in bars and restaurants, giving art back to the public. Today on Artbeat, you're going to meet the unique and remarkable Glenn Miller. Welcome back to Artbeat. Well, as you know, every artist's studio is truly a world unto its own. And when you walk into the studio of the unique and remarkable Glenn Miller, as I told you earlier, you'll see a world that's filled with color and variety. But mostly what I am enchanted with, Glenn, of course, is the stacks of sketchbooks that you have collected over the last 20 odd years. How many people's faces do you think are contained in these? Lauren. Uh, well, I, I, <laughs> I just documented some of my sketchbooks not too long ago, and I ended up with 6,000 Six uh, 6, drawings thousand. of people of different faces. Uh -huh. Now, if you see uh, Glenn sketching in one of our beautiful restaurants here in Ocean Springs, he's very quick. I mean, and you really establish an identity of that person in a matter of truly seconds, it seems. That's it, that's How does it. that come to you? Well, I set up a challenge for myself. Uh, I, I think I was, you know, I'd go, maybe I'd want to go out and socialize, but I, you know, sometimes I'd get bored, couldn't always find a conversation, so I decided I'd make it worthwhile, you know, going out in the, in the, socializing a bar here, a restaurant or whatever. And I was, I was newly divorced, so I had time in my hands. I didn't have my, you know, uh, a domestic life, you know, so, uh, and so I would go out, and I set up a little challenge for myself. Uh, I thought they uh, tried to master the five-minute sketch. Wow. Five minutes. But very, you know, it's a, it was a long process. <laughs> well, not a, really. I mean, when you see the detail on these sketches, and you've seen them um, just recently, I mean, it's just absolutely remarkable. I, mean, I look at people there, and I know who they are. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Really. Um, well, so, what are you going to do with all of these? Well, I, I now that you got into, I'm getting into the computer age. Yeah. And, uh, so I actually, believe it or not, I salvaged all my sketch pad. All everything I had go, went underwater in Katrina, and uh, but I, I had the slow water, what I call slow water, and the clean water, basically, smelled just like the ocean, uh, salt water, uh, and uh, but so. I, f I salvaged things out and I stayed here and I dried things out in the days after the storm. And so I virtually saved uh, my whole sketch pack collection going back to in the 80s. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. In the 80s. And then I, so I, I took them and I, now I've been photographing them, putting them on digital file and I, I want to make discs and maybe pick a website. So people can go and find their drawing that I did of them back in the, you know, maybe at the upstairs, downstairs, all the neat little clubs we used to have, you know, before the casinos came, you know, because, uh, or, or wherever, you know, local places. So you, and, you've, done, you've gone beyond the borders of Ocean Springs with these and, and done sketches? Well, throughout. yeah, I use it as a travel, I use it as a travel journal. If I go on a trip, I, of course, take a sketch pad, sketch an airport, plane, uh, wherever I go, people I meet, uh, just to stay kind of uh, good active with it. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's really a journal. Uh, so you're saying to me when you go into a bar, you don't say to a woman, have you come here often, you go, may I sketch your picture, right? <laughs> no, not necessarily. I'm kidding. I know. It's a good, you know, as far as uh, if you want to say a, a bar trick, it can be a clever It can be bar, a really good one. I a mean, clever it's a, bar, it's I call a it a great bar, line. more of a bar trick to <laughs> do something in five minutes. Uh, like I was just in New Orleans uh, this last weekend, and uh, I have a skill of, uh, I use Sharpies, 
I don't have one on me now, but I usually always have one in my pocket. But a Sharpie will draw on, a, on a anything, you mm -hmm. know. So I could take a plate in a restaurant and draw the waiter oh, or somebody. Nice. So I was I started drawing people's the staff on plates, and they were and it went to the customers, and I ended up I don't know. Uh, you know, you'd, I ended up get did pay for the meal, got free drinks. Everybody was happy. Everybody had their, f their sketch on a plate. But yeah, how just, brilliant! But how things wonderful. like that, men. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's fun to share that with the public. Well, you, I remember after Katrina, and of course we are in the month of the celebration of the fifth anniversary of that terrible tragedy for all of us, and and of course we were all concerned about everyone in our lives that we've loved. But I remember seeing you shortly thereafter, and we you verbally sketched the trauma that you went through. I, is it too painful for you to reiterate that? I mean, mm. can you go through that a little bit for uh, us? Well, yeah, since it is a fifth anniversary, yeah. Uh, <coughs> yeah, it's a, it was quite something. Uh, you know, I, mm, you know I, 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 I'm a bridge tender. That's one of my other, that's my, <laughs> I guess you'd say my, my day job. Right early morning job, you know, and so I've been a bridge tender on the Fort Byer Bridge for now going on 25 years. Uh, I, I went in there on a, a hurricane year, 1985, Hurricane Lena, and rode out to Hurricane at the bridge. Uh, my boss ordered me to go there and to guard the bridge or whatever, so I had to, I stayed there through the storm and that was quite an experience. <laughs> like, I don't know how. And you stayed here I during stayed here Katrina. during Katrina, so I, so yeah, I got up that morning, and it was supposed to be like a, it would, it would have been a work morning. So I got up at, uh, you know, five a or four four a.m. and made coffee just like I was going to go to work. Well, I knew I wasn't going to work because the hurricane was coming. Right. So I looked around. I tried to, you know, see what I could do. I started, yeah, maybe I ought to put things up a little high. I might get some f high water here. I mean, not you know, my because like George, I got a couple inches of water on mm -hmm. the floor, so. I, I put things up a little bit off the floor. I got my mop out, my mop bucket, my mop, and uh, I f did start feeling a sense of dread uh, really? the, before the storm started to come. It was still dark, so uh, you felt that anxiety of I felt some, some something, dread. yeah, weird, yeah, pending. And uh, I I got out the Bible, and I decided, you know, I need I needed some comfort by myself, and uh, so I got the twenty third Psalm. And I said, I am going to, you know, I thought I knew it. I thought I could memorize it. Uh, I knew it, but I tried to say it. And I couldn't get all the words correct. You know, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, mm -hmm. etc. Well, I got the Bible out and I started memorizing it. So I had it down. And then as things got worse and the wind picked up, I just kept repeating that. And I did, I sort of kept me calm. Uh, and... Uh, and then now you were in the front building at that time. I was in the front building with all my treasures. I had sort of a museum up there and a junk shop, really. Uh, some people said it looked like a thrift store, you know. Uh, it had walls covered with art and collectibles and things uh, over years, you know, collecting. And uh, so, uh, you know, I could see they're starting to flooding and so on. and. I guess my worst moment was that I, I went to the back room of my place and had a patio door, glass door, mm -hmm. and I looked at the glass door and water and <laughs> the water was about two oh feet my. high on the glass door. That can't be good. That, that, and <laughs> no. it wasn't in the house yet. Uh, that that uh, disturbing. I saw that and I looked around. There was this one moment and all of a sudden the floor where someplace uh, there was a weak spot on my floor right next to me and like a gusher <laughs> would choo oh, no. oh so I said oh, oh from Lord. the bottom of the floor bottom of the floor because it's so under so much pressure I right. guess water had not come in yet then it found this weak spot and just gusher and then and then it got pretty crazy after that and, and how uh, did you manage well I I was concerned about my my the, all the artwork the and artwork, the paintings yeah. I had there I kept putting up things higher and higher up on the bed, up on the couch, up on uh, high shelves, and uh, then it came a point where, you know, the water was already up to my chest, basically, and I said, I better get out of here. And of course, the refrigerator flips over. That's a shocker to see if the refrigerator's 
floating. So there was, there was a lot of, you said there wasn't a lot of surge, but yet it had some tremendous force to it because it was knocking over yes. large objects. No, well, it just came up, you know, and it started acting like a, sort of like a wash machine inside the house. Mm -hmm. There's all this uh, swirling, powerful water churning around inside the house and things were floating. And, and uh, you know, I had, a, I had some strange moments there, you know, uh, the thing about I need to get out. You know, and, and but the refrigerator was blocking the door. I only had one door that I thought I could get out of. And I had a fighting with this refrigerator, move, trying to get it out of the way because it was floating horizontally there. And uh, uh, I had my only thing I had really packed, I got a little concerned about. I said, well, if I leave, so what am I going to take with me? And I had, I, I collected George Orr pottery, you know. Uh. So I had some George Orr pots from back in the day, you know. I bought them in junk shops for a couple hundred dollars, you know, uh, or even less sometimes uh, back in uh, New Orleans. So I had those. I had my George Orr's in a bag with bubble, with, with bubble wrap. And the, and the water was chest high. Yeah. So I grabbed, a, I grabbed a bag, and I gave a glance over to my couch was floating, and there was this whole flam family of mice on top of the oh my riding on the couch. I said, <laughs> man, oh no. I hope we all make it. You know, I, look, I looked at him and said, we're going to make it, babe. You know, let's, let's, let's get out of here. <laughs> and where did you go? Did. did you leave? I finally got out the door. But then, of course, then uh, I guess the newspaper, there was a newspaper article, and I, the thing that happened was uh, as I was going out the door, I think so, someone had visited me a couple of nights before and brought a, had a bottle of Jack Daniels and they left it there on my counter. Well, it came floating right to me. When I opened the door. It was a sign from it, God. Yeah, so I grabbed <laughs> that. I said, I'm going to need that. Yes. You know. And so <laughs> and I had the George Orr's and my Jack Daniels and into the water I went and pretty much. Uh, so you swam your way out, ooh, out of the, uh, the whole the pretty situation. Pretty much, pretty much. It was over. It, it was deep because. Uh, I remember I, I looked and cut you're in a state of shock and I looked at my driveway and said, Where are my cars? Somebody stole mm -hmm. my cars. Uh, it really it had was that. underwater. And I looked finally saw the antenna sticking up and I said, oh, no good. No, that's no good. So I got and uh, I swam up sword towards my neighbor's house and here he comes out. Uh, that's um, Tyrone. Uh, Cox next door. Mm -hmm. uh, they came out, sort of, and got me, pulled me out of the water. He said he hesitated to pull me out of the water because I didn't have a shirt on and looked like maybe I was nude because he couldn't see my, you know, if I had pants on. He didn't, and his his girlfriend there, he didn't want to. He hesitated. He said, "Pull me out." I can't believe that that was what was going through his mind at a time. That's like what he that. said. That's what he said because I don't know if it was true or not. But he did. He pulled fine for short. Fortunately, I had shorts on, so. Uh, and then, uh, then that, that there was a little higher ground there, but it ended up water came up, kissed, kept coming up, and then that house flooded. And we all three of us jumped into water. Him, uh, is Cheryl, and and Tyrone, and with me, your pottery, with, with your pottery, Jack Daniels, and, you know, Jack Daniels, and we made it up further to the the police station, where in that, now another house of Seymour's. Uh -huh. uh, is, is uh, that Lydia, where you wrote out the remainder mm -hmm, of it then? Lydia Seymour's house. Wow. And, uh, and uh, they took us in. They were a little hesitating because in the middle of the teeth of the storm. Of course. You know, stuff flying and so and so forth. It was pretty intense, you know, but so then we just wrote it out there, you know. What but, yeah. a monumental experience yeah. to live through. Well, we're talking with Glenn Miller here on Artbeat, and we're going to take a short break and come back because Glenn actually was able to salvage the painting that is behind us, one of the treasures that he speaks so dearly of. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Artbeat. I am so sorry if you missed the first segment. It was extremely powerful. We were sitting with the enigmatic Glenn Miller, who endured so much during Hurricane Katrina. In fact, there's a website that was dedicated to artists who lost everything. Uh, I, I read about that recently, and it's still yeah. up. Yes, yeah, Southern Artistry. Uh huh. And that was uh, the, my friend Hannah Leatherberry, which I'm still in touch with. Offered artist in uh, that survived Katrina or wanted to start up uh, a free website on on Southern Art Streets out of Atlanta, and uh, they still they still uh, you know are providing that service for us. 
Well, I saw that and it, it reminded me of the motivation for doing this show because we know how artists are. They're so focused on creating and showcasing your work takes money sometimes and time. And this gives you that time and it costs you nothing except the time that it takes to speak with us on Artbeat. So um, hopefully we're doing our part as well. But behind us is this beautiful painting of your of a man in a boat. I bet you wish you had that boat that night in Katrina. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. do you tell us a little bit about this because it's somewhat unusual. You said it it went through the storm. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I did a series of paintings uh, of these uh, back in the. Wow, this is very old. This is from the 80s, I believe. And uh, well, I just stretched muslin on uh, a frame, and then uh, painted with a combination of uh, like. Uh, house paint, acrylics, uh, whatever I had hand in. That was uh, a funny thing. How there was a there, the, one time Deer Island caught on fire. I don't well, know if you were living there. I, I, do, I don't think I was living like, here, but I do remember you it. You can see some of the like, red. It was a deer, supposed Deer Island on fire. Uh, actually, I think it was a uh, aftermath of one of the 1699 celebrations. They set some tires on fire, and the tires floated over the island and caught the oh, island wow. on fire. So anyway, Freak accident. that was a commemoration. But I, I had, I did a series, and some were I sold some, uh, uh, and uh, some you know just, just uh, they're still in storage. This one I, I brought out, and, and they all, like I say, all got all got wet at that time uh, at, at the hurricane. But I dried it out, and it survived pretty good. So are more. the colors are a little bit? Uh, are they? A little bit more impressionistic than they were initially, or you know, it held up pretty well. I think I washed, I rinsed it off right away. You had to get the salt water off of it. I love it. I think uh, it's I, absolutely magnificent. I don't know how I did that, but you know, we did have water. Uh, you know, we had water. We could rinse things and 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 start trying to. I even used, I think, a light a light bleach water to make sure because you know you're going to get fungus and things like that from the salt right. water, from the ocean water. So now. Knowing you as we do, and seeing you as part of Ocean Springs, but knowing also how close we came to losing you during the storm, what has that done to you and to the work that you create? How has that changed you? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, <laughs> I think the one thing is that I, I better do the work that I'm capable of, or that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm meant to do uh, before you know something else happens that I'm. I'm you know, I go into the other realm. You know, uh, yeah. So I had a, I had a real reckoning with myself, I suppose, and I had been, I think I had uh, kind of gotten very uh, much into doing illustrational mm -hmm. type work, and and I was very much into documenting the historical structures in Ocean Springs, and I, I put all my you know, passion to that, and uh, uh, so created that series, the Ocean Springs Collection, which maybe probably most people know me for. And, uh, but now here it was, uh, you know, I, f I finally said, well, uh, that, all my plates were ruined, by the way, and uh, during the storm, I didn't, I wasn't able to get to them uh, soon enough, and the uh, salt water uh, kind of corroded them, mm -hmm. so they weren't no longer usable. So that, I was sort of out of business there, so what I got into the FEMA trailer, I had some uh, just the inspiration to go back to a style that I had done when I was a younger man and more idealistic and wanted to be, you know, contemporary, you know, into contemporary art and uh, what could be considered contemporary, things more highly imaginative mm -hmm. and highly creative, you know. So... Are they predominantly black and white or do you color them at all? No, I, 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 I color them. Uh, there's some on the walls here. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I started. Uh, I started creating them in the FEMA trailer. I stripped my FEMA trailer out and made a studio wow. out of it. Amazing. I had just left a bed and 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 a place where I could cook. But then I, I took all that that weird furniture out and made just a place to work. What do you call that series? Uh, well, this there. I, I I ended up. Uh, I found out they were so similar similar to a, a earlier style of American abstraction that I started admiring and I could see a lot of similarities and similar influences, even though it's you know, from the thirties and forties. They called themselves Indian space painters. Really? But I, I kind of agreed I, I very much agreed with her philosophy and uh, I had very much the same uh, approach, you know, and uh, inspiration and kind of a so I I 
I, I, that's what I call them. It seems to be a good name for me, and nobody nobody knows what it means, so that's good too. <laughs> you talk about being enigmatic, you know. Yes. So there well, I, can be I think enigmatic. you need to continue that persona. I mean, obviously, we yeah. can't change everything. No, 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 no. So tell me this: Were you prolific in that FEMA trailer? Yes, I did. I I, I set myself the thing. I said uh, I made a little motto. I said uh, Kat Katrina forward. <laughs> so I said Katrina, you can't. You know, wow. you're not going to nice. beat me down. Uh, I'm going to you know come out of this. Uh, uh, I lost a lot, but now I'm going to make more. Uh, more or less. Where did I all felt. this start, Glenn? With you, I mean, we spoke earlier off camera about your mentor. Is that where it began? Well, I, I guess you say. I mean, I, I, I surely was uh, drawing and painting when I was a very young guy, and my family were boot collar uh, workers. Uh, uh, worked in factory. My mother was a housekeeper. Things like this. I, I guess I was supposed to work in a factory, but I. Anybody would ask me when I was seven or eight years old what I was gonna what are you gonna be or whatever uh, I'd say an artist uh, really? you know that and that's how early I was going and so the passion was there from, uh -huh, from yeah, your roots that was it yeah. I didn't get much encouragement and uh, you know, from the family but that made me more stubborn I think you know <laughs> and uh, and uh, that's during the day that it wasn't you know being an artist wasn't so cool you yeah. Know, uh, yeah a little more you know uh, N not not well appreciated among the uh, you know certain group you know so anyway I stayed with it and stubborn with it and then I I became self kind of called myself self-taught I didn't go to sc I, I had to go in the military that kind of messed up any uh, early art art school training you know so I went in the military started working uh, doing art in the military and finally got out of there and then then became a vagabond traveled around the country it was just sort of in the 60s, you know, and having a lot of fun uh, in weird times and then, you know, different crises and stuff. But I mean, I met some fantastic artists uh, that travels, lived in New York City in the village and out in San Francisco and met artists out there and New Orleans, of course. And I ended up market making New Orleans more of my home base there. And I met some, and eventually met uh, a an etcher because I was a pen and ink artist right. and I was doing a lot of hand done pen and ink and and s trying to sell those one of a kind and not getting much money for them so I I admired etching and I got connected with this guy and he taught me I became his uh, you know uh, is, is that uh, Mr. Richards now this is uh, Gene Loving, Gene Loving. Eugene okay. Loving through Eugene Loving I met Charles Richards, Charles who, Richards. Was a, who was also an etcher and, uh, and a great painter and quite a legend in that day in the French Quarter in the New Orleans and uh, I was fortunate enough to you know get under his sort of influence and then we became friends and um, so me, I and here you are in Ocean Springs mm -hmm, yeah yeah you know Artbeat is a half hour show but we could truly dedicate about three shows to your life and to your work and we are running out of time mm -hmm. but I know towards the end of, yeah. of the segment here we're going to uh, when we come back to close, we're going to take a look at some of the Sharpies that you do. Yeah, okay? sure, Can sure, we do that? Sure, we're going to take sure. a real short break. We'll be right back. You are watching the hands of artist Glenn Miller, and as he refers to himself as an etcher, and we've had a remarkable time here at his studio talking with him about his life, uh, his near-death experience within Katrina, and now what we're doing here is just tell us a little bit about what's happening here, Glenn. Well, I'm trying to do one of my uh, five-minute sketches of your cameraman. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's a, he's in the two minutes we have left, by the sketch. way. <laughs> I, do a, I do a pretty good job on men. Uh, some women, uh, women are so beautiful like Miss Elaine. I Thank get sort you. of, I get sort of frozen up. I might not, uh, you know, get nervous. Uh, how do you capture all that beauty? Thank but uh, you. Phil, I feel comfortable with Phil. Yeah, Phil. Yeah. Uh, Phil is going to be on a paper plate very shortly yeah. before the end of the show. So very quickly now, what lies ahead for Glenn Miller? What do you foresee is your future as you move Katrina forward, and you truly are as we're celebrating this year, the phenomenal people celebration of healing about Katrina. You are one of those people, Glenn. What do you foresee for yourself now? Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm I, looking forward to maybe retiring at some point from the bridge and then going and moving to Paris and live for, in Paris for at least a year, one minimum of a year. Wow. Yeah, I, uh, 
That, that's one of my big goals. I, I got to go to Paris on FEMA money back in 07, and that was fun. We'd First like time to go to Paris Europe. with you. Maybe Artbeat can travel to Paris. What do you think, Phil? Yeah, we could probably do that. And this is a tr true lightness of Phil Richardson that I'm seeing develop here. Yeah. Um, so Paris in, in the springtime, yeah, yes? Paris in the springtime, yes. <laughs> or uh, hopefully when the euro's low, too. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. But, you know, with your talent and with the way you come through with all of your sketches, you will be eating crepe Suzette's and the best French wines every night. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been watching Art Beat, and we are so delighted to have had Mr. Glenn Miller, the artist that you see oftentimes riding on his bike through Ocean Springs, completing uh, one of his famous etchings of Phil Richardson, our cameraman here on Art Beat. And if you have any ideas, you see the email at the bottom of the screen. Please email us and let us know what you'd like to see on Art Beat. We'll be back with more Art Beat next week. Thanks for joining us.